Good afternoon, everyone. I am Dr. Sarah Mustafa from Dentist Channel Online. Welcome to today's webinar about a good call for extraction or non-extraction therapy in orthodontics. While we are waiting for the participants to join the session, I will introduce you to our company. Dentist Channel Online is a digital dental media company. It is your marketing solution for dental events, product launches, workshops, and courses. We also provide a collection of scientific articles and blogs about different topics in dentistry. We work hard to be your first-hand information on the technological advancements in the dental field. Now it's time to start the session about a good call for extraction or non-extraction therapy in orthodontics. If you have any question about this topic, please feel free to ask it in the question and answer box and we will answer each and every question at the end of the session. I will start by introducing today's session speaker, Dr. Ahmed Alfiki. Dr. Ahmed holds a bachelor degree in dental medicine and oral surgery and a diploma of membership in orthodontics from the Royal College of Surgeons. He was a general dentist at the Ministry of Health from 2008 until 2011 and an associate orthodontist in the Royal Dentist Center 6 October from 2011 until 2015. After that, he became MOR Training Program Director at Mussoorie University for Science and Technology, 6 October, Egypt, from 2015 until 2017. Then he worked as an orthodontist permanent visitor at the Saudi German Hospital, KSA, from 2015 until 2017. Currently, he's working as an orthodontist at Ram Clinics in Industrial Yambu, KSA. Welcome, Dr. Ahmad. It's our pleasure to have you with us. Thank you, the pleasure is mine. Uh, I'm very pleased to uh, once again be a dentist channel online and hope you uh, just enjoy the presentation and uh, uh, it will be very beneficial to you all. Okay, I'll start now. Yes, please. Okay, uh, our today's topic is about a good call for extraction or non-extraction uh, in planning for any orthodontic uh, case. Uh, of course, I will not dive uh, so deep into details because it's, it's, uh, it, it's needs, of course, uh, 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 a lot of material, a lot of knowledge. So I'm talking for junior orthodontist and uh, also any GP dentist who admire to be an orthodontist uh, someday. And uh, uh, we will just uh, do a brainstorming and uh, I will, uh, you have to focus with uh, uh, me. I will give you some notes. It's not, I, I didn't wrote it down, but just follow my tips. <clears throat> I'll give you uh, through the presentation and inshallah it will be very beneficial to you. Uh, uh, the space analysis planning uh, uh, the, any, uh, any case uh, from uh, mixed dentition uh, starting eight years old uh, to adult uh, patient is London space analysis. And there is uh, an equation should equal zero at the end. In this equation, we will just measure the space available already in the dental arch and also the space required or the space we need throughout the treatment. Uh, uh, we have to measure crowding and spacing, leveling curve speed, any arch which uh, changes, especially in uh, uh, maxillary expansion. Also, uh, incisor anterior posterior change and angulation and inclination of incisors. For the space creation, we'll measure tooth reduction in case of macrodontia and uh, uh, any kind of extraction we will use or planning in our case. Also, space gaining for prosthetic replacement, for example, for opening the space of uh, uh, an implant for lateral incisor as well molar distal movement during distalization and the molar mesial movement or anchorage loss during the treatment. Uh, we will add also to the space gained 
especially in class two cases, the differential upper and lower growth, which means if we are, if we are expecting a potential growth in the pre-adolescent or the adolescent phase, uh, we will have to measure the amount of space gain uh, and we might not need an extraction uh, in such a case. For the space requirement, we will measure crowding and spacing. Of course, the spacing will be measured in uh, positive and the crowding will be measured in uh, minus. And the best way to measure or the way I use is just using uh, a transparent ruler to measure an irregularity for each tooth like this. For the mixed dentition patient, we will give allowance one millimeter for the upper E and just two millimeter for the lower. Primary molars. Leveling curve of SP, of course, for most of the cases, we need the space to align or to, sorry, to level uh, curve of SP. Uh, in case we have a patient with a deep bite, uh, the amount of space needed for leveling curve of SP, uh, it depends on the uh, severity of the, of the uh, curvature of the curve. And this is the uh, exact amount of space to be needed for leveling. One millimeter space we need for aligning a three millimeter depth of curve, 1.5 millimeter for, mil for four millimeter, and two millimeters for a five millimeter curve. Of course, we measure the depth of curve of SP from the lowest point here to the tangent between the distal cusp and the incisors. That is a cusp of the bowler and the insides. For arch width changes, we will allow 0.5 millimeter space for every one millimeter uh, change or expansion in the maxillary arch. For the incisor and posterior change, we allow two millimeter space, or we need two millimeter space for each one millimeter retraction of maxillary incisor. This counts for four incisors. And uh, uh, for uh, only two incisors, it will be uh, two milli uh, one millimeter for each two millimeter incisor retraction. For the angulation and change, of course, we need to align the teeth or the bracket will align the teeth in this inclination, which is uh, toward the uh, mesial, toward the center of the face. So if we have parallel teeth like this, I need 0.5 millimeter to just align incisor. This will be added to the equation. For inclination change, this is very, Uh, if we have uh, increased incisor inclination related to the maxillary plane, we need one millimeter for retroclination, five degrees of each uh, uh, of each uh, uh, tooth. For example, if I have extra ten degrees proclination in the uh, incisors. I will need extra, in addition to the crowding, I'll need extra two millimeters to retrocline or adjust the inclination of the maxillary insides. Uh, for the space creation or the space we gain, we measure it in positive in the equation. Uh, uh, we will measure tooth reduction. For example, any case with macrodontia, also increased Bolton. Uh, discrepancy or bolt-on discrepancy, excess uh, lower dentition material or excess maxillary dentition material. And we might find just with, uh, with the naked eye, we might find excessive premolar size, uh, especially lower fives. Also, we might find uh, a very large uh, lateral incisor. 
lower lateral incisor, and we can measure it by, with the naked eyes. If the maxillary lateral incisor is equal in width to the mandibular lateral incisor, that means we have excessive maxillary incisor Colton uh, ratio, and we need to reduce the mesodistal width of such teeth. For tooth enlargement, if we have big lateral uh, or conical lateral incisor or any other tooth, we must measure before beginning of the treatment the amount of uh, future restoration of such tooth, uh, whether it's composite restoration or uh, uh, fixed processes. And of course, we will measure extraction type of tooth. Of, uh, we, we are going to extract whether it's premolar, molar, or lower incisor. Space opening. Space opening, uh, of course, the famous uh, type of space, op uh, of space opening. Uh, space opening in case of missing lateral incisor when we open space for future dental implant. This will be counted in minus. Also, the distal molar movement in case of the stylization and the mesial molar movement. Mesial molar movement, uh, we measure it in planning anchorage. We just uh, uh, subtract uh, the, the amount of space needed from the size of the tooth to be extracted. For example, if I need uh, four millimeter space for leveling and aligning, and I have first the premolar with mesial width seven millimeter, the amount of mesial mo mo molar movement I'll calculate will be uh, seven minus four, it will be three millimeter, and this just indicates the type of anchorage will be used in planning. Differential growth, as I said before, especially in class two, we should expect in pre-adolescent uh, phase, a growth spurt in the mandible, and it, it, it's subjective, it's different from an individual to another, but we can expect three to four millimeter uh, uh, increase in uh, mandibular uh, in, uh, in mandibular lens and uh, consequently decrease in the over jet. Two size analysis, we use uh, Bolton analysis and I just put this picture to show you uh, uh, so it's, it's obvious we, 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 we don't have to calculate Bolton in such a case. I can see here, this is a microdontic lateral incisor. I have class one canal, class one incisor relationship. Simply, this means I need to uh, just restore the normal size of this lateral incisor with composite buildup. So there is no orthodontic uh, need for a space closure. We cannot space this close because we have a perfect closer relations. We measure the Bolton analysis. We have over O ratio, which is a sum of mandibular 12 mesodistal widths by maxillary uh, multiplied 100, and also for the anterior uh, sextant lower over uh, the upper. The ideal ratio, for the over or Bolton uh, uh, ratio is 91.3% and for the anterior 77.2%. Just to make it easy for you, if there is increase in this ratio, this means we have excess mandible. If there is increase, there is excess mandible and of course vice versa. Okay, uh, I'll just give you a brief uh, uh, storyline or timeline for the history uh, of extraction and non-extraction in orthodontics. Angel, which is the father, which is the father of uh, orthodontics, was convinced that the jaw bones will accommodate the leveling and the aligning of the whole dentition. So he doesn't, he didn't believe in extraction. <clears throat> And Kelvin Case criticized him for non-extraction because he thought 
that the non-extraction uh, therapy will result in prominent uh, face or prominent lips after finishing the case. And Tweed and Beck in 1930s just changed the whole uh, concept and start doing extraction in orthodontics after analyzing uh, uh, the outcome of Engel's cases. They, he, they found out that there is enormous amount of relapse and believe that for more stability, we have to extract these uh, uh, for any orthodontic case. And he, this curve shows to you the timeline in the uh, first of 90s here, Engel believed in non extract therapy and this declined after the research of tweed and big and in recent not so recent from the 70s till now uh, mcnamara and damon and others just believed in uh, the angle school of non-extraction therapy so uh, why the extraction since early 70s uh, was declined because of facial aesthetics they saw that extraction premolars in orthodontic treatment to result in dished in face prominent noses and it will affect uh, the, the looks of a patient they saw that it will result in tmds and they believe that there is no guarantee that extraction in orthodontics will provide more stability than in non-extraction cases. Uh, big appliance, uh, orthodontists who know big appliance, they know for sure that it was outdated by the straight wire appliance. Big appliance, he, he, he made an appliance and applied his technique of extraction, upper premolars and uh, uh, early uh, tipping of incisor teeth, and this uh, was outdated by the straight wire appliance. And the recent prescription we used, ROS and MBT. Uh, as I said before, straight wire and that's self ligation. Self ligation, the demon series, they believe that self ligation, uh, uh, there is a phenomenon called regional acceleration phenomena that will be expansion in the arch and that will, it will be stable. And <clears throat> even they should, they should say that uh, uh, intracanine expansion will be stable. Of course, I'm against this theory. And uh, uh, as a tip, I tell you, please don't, do not expand normal maxilla. Do not expand uh, 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 lower dentition, lower arch, do not expand the intercanine uh, distance, especially in the mandible. Okay, we'll, we'll, we'll catch up later about this. And the gross modification opinion using the functional appliance as well as the recent advances in orthognathic surgery. Uh, now I will talk about one extraction approach, and I can sum up. Uh, I can name a number of uh, advantages for the non extraction approach. Uh, first, less trauma to, to the child, and of course you will face some annoying and the guardian who complained from the uh, your suggested treatment plan, telling you, please, doctor, can we do anything except extraction? I'm afraid it will be harmful. I'm afraid. Do not, uh, my advice to you is just do not be affected by uh, uh, the patient or the guardian opinion, okay? Because you, you will be the one who will be blamed for uh, uh, improper outcome. If this is academic right and you are doing the right treatment to plan, just reassure the patient and tell him it's okay he will he will have anesthesia it will be just a day or two he feels some pain and after everything will be history 
you have to reassure the patient, reassure the guardian, but do not hesitate in front of the patient. Do not let them question your treatment plan. Uh, of course, other advantage is the ease of treatment. Non-extraction uh, treatment is much less in time than uh, uh, in uh, extraction treatment. Consumer de demand, of course, the patient need non-extraction therapy, shorter duration, facial fullness to give young full profile. This is a demon uh, hypothesis. And I don't believe in facial fullness. Yes, you will get a wider arch, a wider smile, but for the for the fullness, uh, um, you will not be so lucky if you give him a wide smile, but uh, uh, you get a patient uh, full of and uh, want to see you and redo orthodontic due to uh, any kind of relapse. Uh, less effect on TMJ, and this is controversial. Less effect on vertical relationship, and of course, less effect on smile rates. Success factors of non-extraction approach. These are the success factors and you have to keep it in mind. Each point is very important when you are taking a decision to, the treat, uh, to treat the case on non-extraction basis. First of all, non-protrusive profile. And this you can see from observation during clinical examination of the patient. Okay. If he has already protrusive profile, please don't, don't align the teeth non-extraction. Even if uh, the patient has a very mild Crowding. Patient have mild crowding and protrusive profile. Okay, extract and explain to the patient why you need extraction. You have to explain to the patient that yes, I can do it non-extraction basis, but it will worsen your looks. It will worsen your profile. Uh, Bolton discrepancy. Of course, it's very beneficial. Uh, we can use it to do uh, uh, to make. Uh, Interproximal reduction, arch asymmetry, uh, no or minimal dental alveolar compensation. Simply, we cannot make camouflage. We cannot, uh, and also in class three, we have to have minimal dental alveolar compensation in class three and class two because the, the non extraction approach is simply we are doing, we are doing dental alveolar compensation for a one who has no dental alveolar compensation. Retroclined labial uh, segment. This is a, a very good advantage for the non-extraction approach. If you have non-retroclined, uh, if you have retroclined incisor, uh, either upper or lower, this means just restoring the normal inclination of incisors will provide you, as I said before, anterior posterior, each two millimeter will give you one millimeter and each five degrees will give you in positive uh, uh, one millimeter space. Growing patient, this is a good benefit, uh, especially in class two cases, we can use fun functional appliance and decline extraction uh, upper premolar to uh, correct the sagittal relationship or to reduce overjet. Good periodontal, health, and this is very important, good periodontal health, especially of the lower incisors and lower canine. <clears throat> For some instances, I see cases uh, which have only one millimeter or two millimeter crowding and um, uh, as minimum as two millimeter curve of speed. And I, 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 I decide to extract uh, fives or four. Uh, just to avoid any proclination of lower incisor, because any proclination of lower incisor with a periodontally compromised uh, teeth, uh, especially in the lower in uh, plus two uh, 40 brushing techniques, this will worsen the condition. It will uh, little the uh, already uh, uh, 
small attached gingiva. It will result in fenestration and dehiscence. It will result in gingiva recession. So please, please, please do not plan non-extraction in periodontally compromised uh, incisor, especially the mandibular incisors. Okay, I will just show you some of, uh, of, of my cases where I find it very reasonable to uh, treat it non-extraction basis. First thing, spacing, is a, uh, 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 whether it's generalized spacing or midline diastema, as you can see here. And of course, after you close the space, you will do uh, phrenectomy. In a case, we have uh, an accountable bolt-on discrepancy, especially uh, excess mandibular bolt-ons. So, so we just align, we do some interproximal reduction in the lower incisors and uh, succeeded to align and get class one and class, uh, class one incisor and the canine relationship. Collapsed arch, as you can see here, I have like about three to four millimeter or more, five millimeter crowding in the upper arch, but I have some collapse here, as you can see in this buccal segment, as well as here in the canine region. Okay. So simply I put them in appliance here, just restore the normal arch form and expand the arch, I will get a well-aligned arch here. And of course, class one canine and incisor relationship. Is also collapsed arch uh, uh, where we managed to level and align the teeth, of course, with the aid of TEDs. But you can see here uh, from the before and after picture, the, the amount of expansion we made in the maxillary arch, which were uh, which was followed by the mandibular arch. Also, there is another example of collapsed arch. You can see here there is a cross bite uh, in the maxillary first molar. I used uh, a three loop TPA with uh, cross elastics here and put also daemon appliance. It aids me in uh, uh, expansion of both arches. And in such a case, there is a collapse in both upper and lower arch with not more than four millimeter uh, crowding considering the amount of expansion, uh, the arch wire expansion itself. So it's very, very allowable here to uh, procline lower in size. Okay, you can procline lower incisor, but to a certain point, we can procline it uh, over five degrees up to 10 degrees in such case with collapse arch. Arch asymmetry, as you can see here, which was treated non-extraction basis. And my tip for you, if you find just by default, any premolar, whether it's maxillary or mandibular, that's uh, placed lingually, don't treat it extraction basis. That just uh, level align and on rigid arch wire, wire put uh, coil, open coil spring. It will derotate the molar and the premolar here. And you will have some space here to just open this lock and uh, uh, align the premolar teeth. And I'm talking here about whether it's upper or lower. Here, here's another example of arch asymmetry. Here's an impacted canine close to the floor of the mouse. And you can see here's a lingual rolling of this buccal segment. Okay. I used uh, heat activated night tie just correct the torque of the buccal segment, open the space and uh, uh, manage to uh, level and align this impacted 
canine. Okay, so please don't freak out when you find any premolar or canine which is uh, displaced uh, lingually. This uh, with uh, uh, just a space opening, you don't have to extract it unless unless there is root resorption or it's it it has a very uh, poor prognosis uh, due to its inclination or uh, if it's close to any. Uh, uh, critical landmark. Here's a case uh, with retroclined labial segment. I had here class one buccal segment, class one canine, and retroclined upper and lower incisor. Simply, I gained the space to relieve crowding from the uh, automatic proclination of the upper and lower incisor. And uh, uh, if you have such, such a case, you have to just make a differential change here in the leveling of the brackets. You have to put it here more uh, epical in the posterior segment and just half millimeter or one millimeter more incisor on the incisor. This will give you during leveling and aligning uh, 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 more wider range of proclination and it will help you in uh, providing a space for leveling and alignment. It is a previous case with the amount of crowding. You can see here the proclination of the incisor. Just it gave us uh, a good space to align the adjacent T's as well as for this uh, lingually displaced lower incisor. <clears throat> Another case of retroclined labial segment. Also here, proclination of labial segment, uh, as well as uh, inter uh, intercanine expansion and the intermolar expansion give us space here to align the canine and we managed to finish the case in class one relationship. And in such a case, just to be cautious from opening the bite, I use early light anterior box elastics. In such a case, it's very dangerous to just put the bracket and put the wire and leave it aligned as well. You have to, first of all, cinch back, okay, and put anterior maxillary elastics. It is a mild class three and uh, with no or minimal dental alveolar. Sorry, this is compensation. As you can see here, this is, we only treat uh, uh, as a major rule. We, uh, with orthodontics only, we only treat mild class three cases. I'm talking about adult non-growing patient, if you, if you meet an adult non-growing patient with moderate to severe or subnessic surgery. Okay, so I, 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 I decided to treat this case and I, I told the patient, yeah, we, 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 we don't have uh, to make or subnessic surgery. Uh, as I saw that there is no or minimal dental alveolar compensation, I can do the compensation myself. I can put a fixed appliance, class three elastics, and I have some spaces here. I have retroclined upper or normal upper incisor. I can procline them using intermaxillary elastics. So yes, we can do it. But if I have the same condition here, and I have already retroclined lower incisor, which means I have already dental alveolar compensation. Of course, I will not treat it. If I have the same picture, okay, so with the same intraoral and extraoral, uh, same over reverse over jet and same over bite, with uh, uh, already uh, proclined upper incisors and retroclined lower incisor, I will not uh, treat the case by orthodontics means only.
Okay, so be cautious. Okay. Now I will discuss uh, the extraction uh, or the type of extraction we use, and we explain why we, we take these out. General factors like caries, periodontal problems, or severe malposition, correction of incisor relationship and overjet in class two cases, especially in adult class, in adult non-growing class two cases, cases relief of crowding. Overbite if you want to provide a space for leveling curve of speed. Uh, biomaxillary protrusion to allow distalization, for example, extraction of uh, sevens or eights, and also two size anomalies, interceptive treatment, and stability wise. Stability wise, because if you have excessive mandibular proclination, the case will not. <clears throat> so if you have already proclined lower incisor, no way, no way you will plan the case on an extraction base. Okay. This is just a part of the line uh, uh, related to uh, stability in deciding extraction in planning orthodontic case. The advantage of extraction approach. Of course, more predictable stability, less protrusive facial profile, controllable outcomes. I mean here by controllable outcomes that uh, uh, you cannot expect open the opening the bite during leveling and aligning, uh, uh, as we expect that it might happen in an extraction uh, treatment. So it's an advantage actually of extraction approach. Uh, big philosophy, he stated that two size reduction required to compensate for dietary change. And as we all know, there is tooth reduction during uh, pre-adolescent and uh, primary teeth, uh, primary dentition uh, uh, due to uh, uh, clenching and eating fibers, tooth, there is automatic uh, tooth reduction. But we, uh, this is not achievable in adult dentition. So it's big philosophy is that we will do it uh, ourselves to uh, make the teeth accommodate the uh, maxillary and mandibular arches. And we are less vulnerable to any gingival recession or any periodontal uh, problem, of course, provided that uh, the patient maintains uh, a good hygienic measure throughout the treatment. Extraction and the profile. Uh, recent evidence uh, has suggested that uh, it, it's not that effective to extract uh, and doing, uh, do the ex, uh, extraction treatment uh, uh, will not that much affect the profile of the patient in case of uh, bimaxial protrusion or uh, class two cases. Like this paper in 1993 by Bowman and Johnston. Uh, they concluded that extraction have a minimal effect on the facial profile, but that the effect is not deleterious and shouldn't influence the extraction pattern prior to orthodontic treatment. So they stated that, of course, it, 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 it doesn't have that effect on the profile, but it doesn't mean that if you go in non-extraction, it will be better. No, if we go non-extraction, it's just getting worse. So we are doing extraction just to level and align the teeth. And in the meantime, preventing the facial profile from getting worse if we go for a non-extraction case. Okay. But in some cases, in some cases, it, it has a very uh, uh, enormous change on profile, but it's totally unpredictable. This paper just want to predict if we extract the premolar 
the range of lip retraction uh, uh, will be, uh, and he concluded or so that upper lip retraction ranged from two millimeter to three to, ten, to, to three to two millimeters. I found that very acceptable. And it, it, it's really uh, uh, different from one another according to uh, the bulk and the flaccidity of the so soft tissue uh, overlying the incisor. And the lower lip also retraction from one millimeter to four uh, to four point five millimeter. It's not that much, but it's acceptable. Extraction and the smile width and some uh, it's about the width of the smile. Uh, and this is the propaganda of the Demon uh, School. They go for non extraction because we uh, go for non extraction, we will give you a wider smile. Okay, patient can smile, and his smaller teeth will be apparent uh, on smiling. Okay, this is not the purpose of orthodontic treatment. We, uh, uh, the purpose of orthodontic treatment is that we get functional and the static ideal occlusion as well as aesthetic of course but we just uh, it, it's not the main purpose we 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 doesn't do orthodontic treatment just to uh, give the patient a wider smile so it's not it's not that uh, accountable for okay but yet in some patient extraction uh, treatment will give a darker Buccal crudor, some paper stated. It is before and after. This is the buccal crudors here. It will result in some narrowing of the uh, maxillary and mandibular arches. For vertical dimension, uh, they will uh, found out that it may result in deepening the bite. But of course, if you plan uh, vertical anchorage so well, there will be no deepening the bite is related to how you plan vertical anchorage the plated how you plan to position uh, brackets eventually if the patient is cooperative and you plan the case well you will not get a deep bite uh, in uh, extraction circuit effect on off proclination on predontium uh, this paper is very important by Artun, 1987, excessive proclination of mandibular incisor, as I said before, may lead to dehiscence and the overlying gingiva will become very thin. It differs according to the gingival biotype, it differs according to uh, uh, inclination of lower incisor, and of course the size of the existing attached gingiva. <clears throat> and the question is, do I have an, as an orthodontist, measure uh, uh, the amount of attached gingiva, or would it be high and uh, uh, you are thinking of non extraction uh, treatment? Yes, you should measure with the naked eye the amount of attached gingiva. It's very less. If the patient to have thin gingival biotype, please go for extraction therapy with enhancing the hygienic measure of the patient. And of course, in some cases, we might consult uh, a periodontist before even uh, uh, starting or bonding the case. The effect of, uh, on relapse, one word, Ex uh, non extraction therapy uh, uh, is a higher risk factor in relapse, especially on the lower incisor, incisor region. But it doesn't mean that extraction therapy will protect the patient from relapse. According to Little uh, et al., 1990, there is no difference in the occurrence of relapse itself. But it, it really differs in the extent or the amount of irregularity. So I expect 
uh, uh, after treating uh, extraction basis, that if the patient uh, was indifferent, didn't wear, uh, did, uh, doesn't wear his retainer, I will get some relapse. But I believe that the extent of relapse will not, uh, or the extent of irregularities will not be that uh, uh, big. It will not be a big deal. In non-extraction therapy, especially before the uh, teenage, yes, there will be might there, there might be a, a, a high degree of irregularity, very very uh, uh, very uh, very severe crowding. Might we get back very severe crowding in case of. Uh, uh, treating the case non-extraction or expanding the mandibular uh, intercanine uh, space distance. Here is uh, some cases. I will just show you, uh, I take it from famous book, Clinical Case of Orthodontics by Haradine, and I, I recommend this book. Very important for all uh, orthodontics, uh, juniors and seniors as well. For example, this case this is a key factors or the uh, keywords we might we should see before uh, planning uh, the case. Sagittal relation from cephalometric interpretation, uh, average dental average inclination, mild class two. There is the intraoral photos. As you can see here, I have maybe some spaces here if I counted four to five millimeter space and just three millimeter. And I have here some collapse of the buccal segment, as you can see. So in such a case, I would extract fives because anchorage is not very critical in such a case. Okay, I have a normal incisor inclination, not proclined, so I doesn't need space for uh, treating any overjet. I have plus one incisor relation, as you can see, and yes, uh, I would extract five, start aligning with less bags, and uh, I depend uh, just to protect myself from any anchorage loss. I prefer uh, push mechanics rather than pull mechanics. So in such a case, I just want six, four incisor and putting a coil spring here just to retract the canine for the upper and lower arches. Is such a case with an adult case? Yes, it has uh, not too much crowding, the upper and lower arch, but massive incisor proclination. In such a case, just to uh, have maximum effective orthodontic treatment, I tend to extend the premolars and use many screws for retraction, uh, the upper and lower arches. Also, I might use uh, TPA and lingual arch just to prevent uh, any arch collapse and to prevent uh, molar rotation. Here's a class one relationship with average dental inclination, as you can see here. But this is a case of severe crowding. Okay. Uh, first instance is 4 4 case with maximum anchorage using TEDs. Is such a case as you can see here, plus one incisor, plus one skeletal from the cephalometric, and I have a retroclined upper and lower incisor and mild crowding. This is a perfect case for non extraction therapy. I will not extract. Yes, I will treat the case because proclination of the incisor will provide me some space here to align the upper arch and also leveling curve of speed of the mandible. Another case which, ha which have, has uh, uh, average dental inclination, plus one relation, as you can see. And it's apparent that it's in the mixed dentition phase. And this, it's very important in such a case. I, I tend to start the treatment early in the mixed dentition. Okay, and observe the patient for two years is 
no problem uh, with it. In such a case, I go with the same schedule as serial extraction, just putting uh, uh, TP and lingual arch to act as a space maintainer. And uh, if the patient wants, I, I put braces on the incisor and make a two, two by four uh, appliance. It's very important uh, to balance extraction here. If you extract C's, you have, on this side, you have to extract on the other side to prevent any shift for, uh, of midline. Uh, uh, midline shift, is that okay due to extraction? Uh, is mainly caused by extraction of C's, unilateral C's and unilateral D's. Extraction of E's will not result, extraction of E's or permanent molars will not affect the midline <coughs> of the patient. Here's an adult case as a parent, as a mild skeletal two with an average dental inclination. It has moderate crowding. Of course, this case is due to early extraction of upper C's and uh, the, the, the canines are blocked out. We extract upper falls only. And in, in all my cases, I just examined the lower arch before the upper arch. And I see here the amount of crowding is doable. Uh, none extraction. So in such a case, we extract upper force. This case has yeah class one relationship. <clears throat> and the average incisor. But it has close to size relationship, as you can see here. Only the upper central incisors are proclined. But we are going to extract here due to the class two relationship, we extract upper four. And it's very dangerous in such a case to extract lower fours. And this is the, the case we talk about uh, in case of deepening the bite in any class two incisor case, whether growing, non-growing, do not attempt as much as you can to extract lower folds. Even if it's moderate crowding, try to use push mechanics, push coil spring and extract fives. Extracting folds will worsen the overjet and the overbite enormously, okay? Uh, as if you are, treating in one direction and just doing harm in the other direction. This is very obvious and very, very uh, jerky planning. So I'll say it again, do not extract lower fours in case of increased over jet any way ever, okay? If you have a severe crowding and you have over jet that above five millimeter or six millimeters, this means that the case is a surgery case. There is no way to treat the case by orthodontic means only and get an ideal over jet and incisor relation. We have also skeletal two case with upper incisor proclined, as you can see, upper and lower incisor proclined. For such a case, if, if I have normal profile like this, just recruited mandible profile, normally I would extract upper force only. Normally I would extract upper force only. But as the lower incisors are proclined, I will also extract lower premolars. Some of, some of you will say, so you will extract upper and lower fours. You said before that you will never extract lower fours in 
uh, in class two cases. Why do you extract lower pulse in, in this case? Because I have proclined lower incisor and I have moderate crowding here. Okay, so I'm not that afraid uh, uh, in uh, uh, pulling out lower force. Why? Because most of the space will be consumed in leveling and aligning the uh, labial segment irregularity here. Okay, so I would not extract lower force in a similar case with aligned lower arch and lower incisors with normal inclination. Okay, I hope you got it. Some of the uh, cases that uh, will not be treated non-extraction, of course, we'll do extraction here. We extracted upper four for blocked out and locked out maxillolateral incisor, as you can see, is a blocked out tooth. Of course, I use, uh, there were many screws here, but not uh, shown. Just I avoided here initial bonding of the lower incisors because I, I, I just to avoid any uh, lower incisor proclination and uh, anchorage loss. I used push mechanics, I used mini screws just to align and level the impacted lower incisor here. I blocked out, sorry. Case of canine impaction, of course, with favorable uh, impacted canine, we extract upper force. <clears throat> unilateral ex extraction, unilateral extraction only in uh, midline shift, midline shift, and uh, uh, normal overjet. Here is a normal overjet, okay? And I have severe midline shift, as you can see, I extract the right maxillary four, and I used here, uh, uh, ICC screw just to deviate or move the whole detection to the, towards the right side. And I managed to align and level the, uh, the, the high canine, the left high canine here. C premolar extraction. So uh, one, uh, one premolar extraction, C premolar extraction, we use it, uh, this case, I just don't have the uh, lateral photos. It's subdivision case. This one also is subdivision case. The difference between this case and the one after it is we have a class two division one subdivision. This is called a class two division one subdivision. We had a class two buccal segment and the class one buccal segment. I extracted upper force because I have a, uh, to decrease the overjet and get plus one incisor relation. And I just extracted the left mandibular premolar just to adjust the midline. Here is the same case. We have five millimeter uh, shift in the lower uh, midline and I had uh, six to seven uh, millimeter overjet. So I extracted both maxillary premolars and the one on the left only, and I get here is the midlines are on, and I have a plus one and uh, plus one incisor and the canine the relationship. For a typical in extraction, uh, I really like uh, extracting upper molars, especially. And uh, why I'm saying upper molar, especially because it doesn't take that time. So do not imagine that. Extracting molars will uh, will prolong the treatment time. If you uh, if you if it's poor prognosis, we have a badly decayed tooth or need uh, endodontic treatment, or already had root canal, you should extract the upper molars to relieve crowding and just leave the sound teeth as it is. Okay, this will not affect your treatment time. Uh, by any means. For the lower molars, yes, it will take much time in closure. 
and not to endanger the incisor relationship, I like protracting the lower molars, especially with many screws. Do not try to fire anchorage and to power chain just from six to six on the lower arch and expect to keep the incisor relation as it is and expect there will be no tipping uh, or bowing in the arch, okay? So I advise you to extract upper molars. Don't be afraid from extracting upper molars. For the lower molars, you, you will have extra time for finishing the treatment and you need to put many screws for uh, uh, protraction because the amount of space provided by molars are very large. We're talking about 10 millimeters and 11 millimeters. So uh, it's recommended in uh, moderate to severe crowding. And if you have large uh, filling uh, caries or endo treatment, extract the molars, don't be afraid. I had some tipping here because it was, I didn't extract it myself. It was an old extraction of lower molar. I make molar uprighting and <clears throat> just uh, was aligning the, uh, was leveling, sorry, the maxillary canine. I just close the space here and we are so close. It was class two. I have here class one canine relationship and just with uh, loop mechanics, I just close the over uh, jet. This is another, another case of extracting upper uh, sixes. But this is throughout the treatment, not yet finished. Severe crowding as, as this. I, I don't need to plan anything. Okay. I'll extract force, put many screws upper and lower just to prevent any anchorage loss from sixes and fives here. I'd rather put here behind the six or here and light gate, as well as bonding uh, seven. And another tip for you in extraction, bond seven. Bond seven, okay? To prevent any bowing in the dental arch. Put TPA, okay? To prevent molar tipping and preferably, preferably uh, bond uh, uh, upper and lower. Uh, seven, don't be afraid from leveling cave of speed and opening the bite. Okay, you are already extracting in, in, the, in, in the treatment. Okay, so don't, be, even if the, even if the uh, bite opens uh, during the treatment due to leveling cave of speed, second to bonding seven. Okay, it's normal. Okay, it, it uh, bonding seven will maximize the anchorage. Okay and uh, uh, prevent any molar tipping. Of course, uh, light forces are very important, but just in case, over-engineer your case, bond seven, and uh, uh, don't be lazy, okay? You will get used to it, and uh, you will get a very successful uh, outcome. Last, a typical extraction, lower incisor extraction. I never did it before. Uh, it, it has a certain condition like very excessive Bolton uh, ratio, uh, mild class three. And uh, if you have predominantly uh, compromised lower incisor blocked out from the uh, arch, you can extract uh, lower incisor. In such case, the patient came already with uh, extracted lower incisor. So I'm just trying here to uh, treat the case and finish it in class one incisor uh, relationship. Of course, the uh, disadvantage of lower incisor uh, extraction is that uh, it's very difficult to get a class one incisor relationship. We get eventually, uh, most likely, class two incisor relationship, increase the overshift, and uh, scissor bite will also might have due to collapse uh, of the arch. So. Uh, you have to fulfill the condition before planning with uh, lower incisor extraction. And you also have to make sure that the patient has no problem with uh, dental midline shift.
Okay, I'm finished here. Thank you so much. I'd like to thank you, Dr. Ahmad, for this informative session. So meanwhile, I will ask your permission to introduce our company to all the participants. And I request all the participants to kindly put their questions in the question and answer box if they have any. And we will answer each and every question at the end. This is our company, Dentist Channel Online, Healthy Smiles, Wealthy Lives. Dentist Channel Online is a leading dental media company that aims to spread awareness and knowledge regarding various aspects of dentistry. We conduct regular webinars and courses about different areas of dentistry. Being a prime member with Dentist Channel Online will, will bring uh, you several opportunities, accredited webinars and dental courses. So if you're not a prime member yet, kindly join our family to get free certificate of participation after every event and get exclusive offers and discounts on our online and on-site paid courses. This is an example of the certificate of participation that you will get after every event. About our upcoming webinars, we have a webinar tomorrow with Dr. Arwa Sayed from KSA. She will talk about bone grafting in implant dentistry. You can find the link of this webinar in the chat box. On Friday, January 14, we have a webinar with Dr. Raouf Rashid Jawad about preventive me methods uh, to prevent spot lesions, white spot lesions de development during fixed orthodontic treatment. On Saturday, January 22 at 7 p.m. Indian Standard Time, we have a session with Advocate Sushan Samudrala about forensic dentistry and law. And on Saturday, January 29, we have a session with Dr. Haysam Abdel Aziz about endodontic separated files, the magical tricks. I request all the participants to kindly save this number and then send a message on WhatsApp with their name so they will be added to our broadcast list and they will receive everything about our upcoming dental webinars and courses. Today's webinar is sponsored by NovaMind. NovaMind offers a full spectrum of implants and prosthetic solutions that accommodate any clinical need in modern implantology. We successfully supply highly demanded dental implants types called internal hex, tissue level, bone level, and active conical connection. Our EU production unit and product quality is appreciated worldwide. Dental implants and dental restorative solutions produced, maintaining all the standards of EU medical device regulatory. Products are manufactured in Athens, Greece, and distributed worldwide with more than 1 million happy restorations. If you want to know more about NovaMind, kindly check their website. Last but not least, don't forget to join our family and become a Prime membership with Dentist Channel Online. You can find the link also in the chat box. Uh, being a prime membership with Dentist, with Dentist Channel Online will give you a lot of benefits and will cost you less than $7 per year. And last, don't forget to follow us on our social media platforms, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Now we can move on to the question and answer session. We have a question from Dr. Sora. She's asking, what are the factors that we depend on when we decide to extract either tooth number four or tooth number five? Uh, uh, we, uh, the factors are first, uh, uh, the amount of crowding is very important. If we have a mild uh, crowding, it's easier to uh, extract fire, depending on the incisor relation. Uh, class one incisor relation with mild crowding, we can extract fire normally because the anchorage is not critical. Okay, we can lose uh, four millimeter uh, normally, it will. Uh, it will uh, not affect us. But we have, if we have uh, 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 bimaxillary proclination, uh, uh, we, if we have class two proclination uh, and moderate to severe crowding, of course, the anchorage will be, will be very crucial to us and we need to extract force. Okay, we have another question. In which cases sink back mechaniz mechanism to be used? Best way to give sink back bending? Sorry? Can you check it? It's in the chat box. Last question from Dr. 
Kumar, yaş Kumar. Uh, best way to give sense back bending. Yeah, you can do it with the wine girls. Wine girls fly normally. Of course, for the uh, nickel titanium wire, you have to heat it first. And for the stainless steel wire, you can do it. Okay, I think that's it. We don't have any other question. I would like to thank you so much, Dr. Ahmed, for sharing your knowledge and experience with us. And we are looking forward to organizing more webinars with you in the future. Thank you. Thank you so much. Dr. Thank you, everyone, for joining us tonight. Thank you.